Hey, welcome back everybody. Happy Wednesday. Hope we're having a wonderful and hopefully very warm middle of the week as it is brutally cold out there for much of the country. Now some good news and some bad news there. We are going to kind of warm up a little bit here through the next couple of days before another shot of Arctic air moves in. The good news though is we've got a very big time warm up here uh, in store about a week out from now and we'll talk about that in today's video. Now, unfortunately, before we get to that warm up, though, we do have another winter storm to track through a big section of the country, including uh, some major population areas and some areas that I've gotten a lot of comments from telling me uh, that there's been a real lack of snow so far this winter. So some of you are probably going to get your first, um, I don't want to say real snow of the year, but at least uh, notable snow uh, here going into the next couple of days. Uh, now, outside of there, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We are trying to get to uh, 10,000 here, and uh, we're getting close. We're getting very close to 7,500 now. Uh, so, again, that milestone is getting closer and closer there. Uh, that'll be definitely really cool when we hit it, and I know we will. Uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time and work on our part to get there. Now, outside of that, obviously, also like the video if you like it, comment, let me know where you're watching from, and of course, if you have any cool pictures out there, or uh, maybe if it's just cold outside and you want to send a picture of your thermometer, definitely consider uh, submitting those photos with the photo submission link in the description, and we are lucky enough to have two more photo submissions uh, here from the past couple of days. These two photos, uh, the one on the left comes from Kathy in Virginia, uh, that was taken on uh, the 15th, and then the second one here on the right is from Elizabeth in Knoxville, Tennessee, also taken on the 15th here. Uh, so I did mean to put uh, some of these photos on yesterday, but again, unfortunately, I just uh, didn't really end up getting around to it. So I do apologize, but Tuesdays and Thursdays are uh, very hectic days for me. Uh, just so you know, if the uh, upload schedule's weird or the videos are a little shorter on those days, uh, there's your reasoning. Uh, but to talk a little bit about these pictures, again, it did snow in Virginia. Kathy did a great job with this picture showing us that, and uh, you can even see the footprints in the yard there. Elizabeth here uh, in Knoxville, almost 10 inches of snow here. Again, a lot of folks in Tennessee really overperformed with that last snowstorm, and all this snow really is still on the ground as it is, again, brutally cold uh, through much of that part of the country. So I'm sure this scene looks very similar now uh, than it did a couple days ago, which is quite different than a lot of the southern snows that we're kind of used to in the south. Uh, so again, uh, that storm is going to be remembered likely for a while for a lot of folks there in Tennessee as it really did overperform quite a good bit. All right, now talking a little bit about what we're seeing out there. Again, it is brutally cold. I'm recording this at about uh, 945 here and you'll notice we're still below freezing for much of the country here. Uh, from the deep south all the way really uh, up into Canada and then back up along the Rockies. Again, the only part of the country that's really well above freezing right now is south and um, kind of central part of Florida as well as the west coast here into California and Arizona. Uh, so again, this Arctic air mass, it has really taken over the entire country. Where I live in Charlotte, we got down to about 17 last night. Uh, I know some folks uh, not far from Charlotte uh, got down into uh, the low teens and of course places through the Tennessee and Ohio River Valley uh, were well below zero. I even think a station in Alabama got down near uh, five to ten below zero. So again, uh, crazy cold temperatures here and I'm sure a lot of daily records have been broken there in the temperature department. Now taking a look at satellite imagery, again very important to kind of time out what we're expecting here and we've got uh, kind of two big things on uh, the map here. You'll notice here's that uh, Arctic boundary and let me pick a different color so you can see it a little bit easier here. Uh, but here's that Arctic boundary on the right part of your screen. There's that cold front sweeping through really the entire country. You can see all the storms associated with that front uh, now well off into the Atlantic and over sections of uh, New Brunswick and Labrador right now up into Canada. Uh, but the other big thing we need to kind of watch out for here is our next storm system out in the west uh, spinning away here bringing some snow, some ice and some rain showers out there. That eventually is going to kind of dive through the plains today and hook up with another piece of energy down here uh, and that could lead to a bit of of a uh, pretty notable snowstorm here through sections of the Ohio River Valley and into the Northeast throughout the next 72 hours or so. Now watches, warnings, advisories, and radar imagery out there. Uh, luckily radar quiet for most folks outside of the west coast. Again, you'll notice all this precipitation showing up from that storm system we just looked at. Uh, but for everyone really east of the Rockies, we're in a little bit of a lull right now outside of the very cold uh, air, which obviously, you know, is a problem. Uh, the only real precipitation we're seeing is some uh, pretty big time lake effect snow continuing up through Buffalo, uh, even here into upstate New York, kind of uh, north of Syracuse there into the Adirondack Park area. But uh, again, really right off the lakes here, seeing most of that snow. And again, another band of snow setting up shop just north of Buffalo right now. And that will likely meander a little bit north or a little bit south throughout the day, depending on that wind direction off the lakes. 
Uh, now, in terms of the watches, warnings, and advisories, though, again, most of this blue out here are just uh, wind chill uh, watches, or excuse me, wind chill advisories, and even a couple wind chill warnings sprinkled in here uh, in those kind of uh, more gray colors on your map. And then these purple colors are hard freeze warnings in effect for much of the deep south. Again, planting season in this part of the country goes really year round, uh, as it's you know generally you know pretty warm. But we're seeing hard freezes again really everywhere from the Gulf Coast. Uh, all the way up through the country. And then back out west, winter storm warnings and winter weather advisories, even a couple ice storm warnings left over uh, there for that ongoing winter storm. And uh, speaking of that winter storm, let's go ahead and dive on into it a little bit here. Now, this is kind of what radar looks like right now. Again, scattered uh, kind of uh, snow showers here for much of the west coast, specifically here in these higher terrains of the Rockies, especially the northern Rockies, kind of Utah northbound, uh, seeing some snow. Now, we do still have some ice mixing in here, kind of along the Washington-Oregon border. That's going to luckily slowly uh, kind of let up throughout the day here. And uh, you'll notice as uh, we kind of continue to move this ahead into time, uh, we're going to see another kind of burst of precipitation later this afternoon. That's going to lead to even more snow falling. But luckily, by this point, uh, most of our folks along the Oregon coast are now changing over to rain. So all that snow, or excuse me, all that ice we were seeing up there, slowly but surely going to change to just a cold rain this afternoon. But we will still have to watch for some ice totals here, again, along the kind of uh, Washington-Oregon border there, where we could see some sleet and freezing rain slowly pile up. Now, all of that snow and our storm system itself slowly works off towards the uh, east throughout the day today, overnight tonight, and here it is uh, by the time we're getting into about midnight, uh, again, kind of there over the northern Rockies before eventually, by the time we're waking up tomorrow, now it is beginning to slowly exit off into the northern uh, Great Plains there, bringing some snow. Uh, now, outside of that, another storm system, well, really, honestly, just a nonstop train of storms, uh, storm systems are likely going to continue to work into the Pacific Northwest uh, throughout the next couple of days, really throughout the next week or so. The good news is uh, the wintry side of that outside of the mountains will slowly get less and less as, it, uh, as this Arctic air slowly gets beaten back a little bit over time here. But again, just be aware, another storm system right on the horizon for you folks in the PNW. All right, snowfall totals over the next 48 hours or so. Obviously, a lot on the map here showing up in those higher terrains. More than two feet of snow and not out of the questions here through the Cascades down even into uh, the higher terrains of Oregon. And then also sections of northern Idaho into Montana and even back towards Yellowstone. Uh, going to see uh, some big time snow totals out of this. Not out of the question here. Again, a couple feet of snow, uh, very possible. Alrighty, now let's talk about the uh, Central Plains and the East Coast a little bit. Again, this is where that uh, storm system is going to really kind of uh, begin to get its act together. Uh, and this is this afternoon. You'll notice relatively quiet outside of lake effect snow continuing into upstate New York, even into sections of uh, Canada here, seeing some snow through Ontario, and uh, even up into the UP of Michigan, likely seeing some lake effect snow as well this afternoon. Now, it's overnight tonight and into tomorrow morning, though, uh, that our storm system kind of really begins to get its act together. And we're going to have two different pieces of energy here to watch out for. This is 8 a.m. tomorrow. We've got the main storm itself back over the Dakotas and Nebraska bringing some snow. And then we've got kind of another piece of energy bringing a prefrontal band of snow here. Uh, here through Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh, even in, uh, excuse me, even into Detroit and into uh, the Erie uh, area of Pennsylvania. You can see some snow tomorrow morning. Uh, that, though, stays relatively light, just kind of some light snow. Uh, and then this is when our two main players kind of take a hold here. Here's a northern piece of energy, again, bringing some snow uh, tomorrow afternoon through Iowa at this point, and Minneapolis, uh, sections of Nebraska, South Dakota, and then here is that southern stream piece of energy. A lot of the times when we have these storm systems, we've got the northern piece and the southern piece, uh, and this one is no different. We have these two pieces here, and eventually they're going to kind of come into uh, contact here during the evening hours of Thursday and ramp this up into more of a kind of big band of snow. And you'll see that here in just a moment. But let me back this up just a little bit. Uh, again, this is kind of early to late morning on Thursday. We're still dry for most folks, again, outside of that snow up into the northern tier of the country. Uh, but here we go into uh, the afternoon of our Thursday. And we've now got that southern piece of energy bringing some freezing rain here uh, once again to folks that just saw wintry weather. So I think areas like uh, Memphis, Nashville, uh, kind of points in between all throughout I-40 through Tennessee, likely going to get a band of freezing rain here uh, that is going to work on through tomorrow afternoon and evening. And you'll notice that showing up there in the pink on the center of your map. Now, south of there through Alabama, Mississippi, luckily we're going to be back above freezing by this point in the afternoon, and we'll likely just see some drizzle or some light showers moving on through. 
Uh, but again, got to be a little concerned here. This is uh, evening of Thursday, and we've got a pretty big area of winter precipitation breaking out here uh, in the Mid-South. Much of Kentucky seeing either freezing rain, sleet, or snow. Uh, same story for much of Tennessee here throughout the afternoon and evening hours of our Thursday. Now, at this point, the two pieces of energy are kind of starting to phase together. And what I mean by that is it's going from two pieces of energy to just one piece right over the central part of the east here. And uh, you'll notice how that kind of takes shape here going throughout the overnight hours of Thursday into Friday. And thanks to that, we've got a big band of snow setting up shop here uh, through Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, southern Michigan, southern Wisconsin. Uh, and I can tell you, I've gotten so many comments from Ohio the past couple weeks telling me, uh, where's winter at? We haven't seen our snow. Well, this is probably your storm here. I don't think it'll be a blockbuster storm, but it'll be enough that uh, we'll definitely lay some snow on the ground, probably even some roadways, and uh, cause some issues here. Now here we go, this is about midnight tomorrow night, and uh, again, we've got this big nice band of snow setting up shop, uh, likely a pretty nice snow, just kind of falling steadily uh, with uh, you know lighter areas and heavier areas obviously, but overall again, just a really nice easy setup here to forecast with this band of snow. Uh, now to the south of there, we will have uh, some freezing rain issues continuing here into eastern Tennessee and uh, into the higher terrains of North Carolina and southwest Virginia, uh, which is good old-fashioned cold rain once again into the Carolinas and Georgia here with some rain showers overnight uh, Thursday into our Friday. Now, by the time we're waking up Friday morning, that band of snow slowly but uh, surely working eastbound here. And now we've got snow breaking out through much of Pennsylvania, southern New York State, New Jersey, uh, even eventually into the Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Long Island areas here <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, throughout the day Friday. Now, you'll notice also at this point, uh, kind of a front is showing up pretty evidently here. And on the back side of the storm system, very cold air is going to once again funnel in. Uh, so obviously it was quite cold this morning. A lot of folks are very aware of that. I don't have to tell you. Uh, well, we're going to kind of rebound a little bit this afternoon, rebound a little bit more tomorrow afternoon. But by the time we get into Friday afternoon, another shot of this cold air is going to work on in behind this storm system. Now that's as far out as that model goes, so we'll have to switch to another model here, uh, using our GFS, kind of picking up at the same time that we just left off. Uh, one thing I will also mention on the GFS here is it's showing a little bit more rain here in the southeast, so don't be caught off guard uh, if maybe a, there's a little bit more rain than the last model showed here through Georgia, the Carolinas, <clears throat> excuse me, and even back down into Alabama, again overnight Thursday into the early morning hours of Friday. But again, by the time we're waking up Friday morning, most of that rain should be offshore here as that front moves on through. Now, Friday afternoon, the storm system continues to strengthen as it works off the coastline. And with that very strong injection of cold air on the backside, we could get a quick heavy band of snow even uh, here along the I-95 corridor, especially through Philadelphia, New Jersey, uh, Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island. This could be your storm against some of those coastal areas that haven't seen a lot of snow this year. Uh, cold air is going to be no problem this time. So uh, the storm being a little bit further offshore actually helps you folks, uh, you know, kind of uh, keeping that cold air in uh, the backside of the storm and not having to worry about that warm air advection. Another thing we will likely see big time Friday afternoon is a pretty good northwest flow event. You'll notice all of this snow kind of hitting the mountains here from North Carolina up through Virginia uh, into Ohio, seeing some snow showers here still on the backside throughout the day Friday before slowly we clear out overnight Friday and into our Saturday with just some leftover lake effect snow bands here, uh, this time coming out of the north and not so much out of the west. Uh, so again, a little bit different there in that lake effect snow department, but it continues into Saturday afternoon with some more northwest flow and lake effect before I think going into our Sunday, uh, we rebound and then we kind of get a little bit of a pattern change going into next week. Let's take a look at some of these snow totals for this storm system. Again, a nice stripe of snow here uh, into the northern uh, Great Plains here from Nebraska into Iowa uh, into South Dakota here. One to three inches of snow, not a uh, big time storm by any means, but you know, enough that you'll notice it here uh, throughout the day, uh, really today and going into tomorrow as well. Again, a nice uh, kind of stripe of snow for you folks. Moving this over into the Midwest, this is when totals kind of pick up a little bit more, especially in kind of the northern sections of Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois here. Uh, we could see a good three to five inches of snow out of this. Uh, and I will mention this is including the band of snow itself as well as the lake effect on the backside. So that's kind of what you're seeing here with isolated totals getting higher uh, into kind of the Gary, Indiana area and into extreme southwestern Michigan here. Uh, that's kind of that uh, north to south lake effect snow uh, that we're expecting, again, kind of as the storm pulls away going into our Friday afternoon and into Saturday. Uh, but either way, again, a good section of the uh, country here 
going to see a good two to four inches of snow uh, as this band just works on through and slowly dumps that snow uh, for a lot of folks. Even down into Kentucky here, I know it's kind of hidden on the bottom part of your map here, but a good one to three inches of snow as well uh, as that precipitation kind of over, uh, overlaps with that cold air. And we've got a, a pretty good snowstorm here uh, going into our um, you know Friday overnight and um, or really, excuse me, Thursday overnight and into our Friday. All right, now I do want to mention ice a little bit here as well. Again, we looked at that band of uh, kind of freezing rain and sleet likely to move through. A glaze upwards of isolated spots could see, uh, you know, five one hundredths to a tenth of an inch of ice here. So not off the charts or anything, not nearly as bad as what we saw a couple of days ago, but still enough it's worth mentioning. We'll likely have some slick spots on the roads there for a moment or two. Uh, again, Friday evening here is likely the timing here through much of Tennessee into the mountains of North Carolina and even southwest Virginia and southern Kentucky here. So again, just making sure that you're uh, being careful on that commute home Friday uh, as you're getting ready for the weekend. All right, the Northeast, this is a place I think, again, we could see some big time winners uh, in the snow department. And you'll notice a couple of kind of big areas showing up on your map. All of this is lake effect uh, driven. Again, we've still got those lake effect uh, bands uh, taking up shop here through New York, uh, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. So a lot of snow for those folks, maybe more than a foot likely, I think, uh, in that pocket in upstate New York. Once again, in the Buffalo area, more than a foot of snow here. Uh, but the actual storm itself is going to bring snow to these areas that I have circled on your map. And again, a lot of isolated spots here could see three to five inches. I think oh, some folks could uh, kind of get on the higher end of these totals here, especially kind of in this area where that storm might be cranking up on the backside. And you could get a bit of a deformation band of snow, just meaning kind of heavier snow uh, there again, kind of as the storm is exiting uh, overnight Friday. But widespread, about three inches of snow for most folks here, I think, uh, through Pennsylvania, Philadelphia. I know you kind of got uh, the raw end of the deal the other day. The National Weather Service had four inches forecasted for you. Uh, you only ended up getting about an inch and a half or two as that warm air moved in. But you got another shot at it here to kind of make up for that. Uh, D.C., Baltimore, you're kind of on the southern end here. I think one to three inches is more likely. Uh, this storm's going to be just a little bit further north than you. Uh, but again, I think it still will snow in those areas. And again, considering how little the snow has been through the I-95 corridor this winter and last winter combined, uh, this I'm sure will be a kind of welcome storm uh, from a lot of folks here. All right, overall impacts here. I love this map. It shows uh, overall winter storm impacts for the next one to three days. And you can see our storm showing up pretty well here uh, in the Ohio River Valley and into sections of the Northeast. Not off the charts here, overall minor impacts. Uh, but in those lake effect regions, we're pushing uh, moderate to major and even extreme impacts here. Uh, kind of again in those uh, excuse me in some of those areas uh, that we'll see a little bit more lake effect in fact my talking is so bad i'm going to take a sip of coffee here uh, maybe that'll help me get through the last uh, five minutes or so of this all right uh, we're good awesome okay uh, so that's uh the storm there also i will mention here uh, you'll notice back out west obviously big time impacts there in those higher terrains uh, anytime I see these really big snow impacts into the higher terrains of the West Coast and the Rockies, I always think of the movie The Shining. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I'm, well, I can't imagine you haven't seen it. It's been out forever, obviously, uh, and it's kind of a really big movie, but I always just think of that big snowstorm that moved through in that movie anytime I see this map and uh, those impacts are big out there. So again, a little bit of a tangent there, but just uh, kind of something I think about. All right. Uh, so that's a snowstorm. That's where we're going to see snow, where we're going to see ice. Another thing uh, to talk about here, obviously, are the temperatures. And it is very cold out there today. Uh, what I'm showing you here, this is likely uh, temperatures here going into this afternoon. Uh, so you'll notice a lot of folks still not getting above freezing today, but we will rebound a little bit before once again... Uh, we go into tonight, and by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning, uh, we've got another very cold night in store. Uh, again, getting back below freezing for a lot of folks, and I would imagine uh, totals will, not totals, but um, temperatures will likely be a little bit colder than even shown on this map. What you will notice, though, is going into our Thursday afternoon, again, we once again rebound. That warm air slowly pushing northward, especially down into Texas. Look at these temperatures rebounding very nicely, um, you know, for our Thursday afternoon here. Uh, and then going into Thursday evening and into our Friday morning, again, once again gets cold as that storm moves on through, bringing that cold air back here. And by the time we're getting to Friday afternoon, we've got a pretty potent uh, cold front kind of working on through here. Again, at this point, the storm system will be kind of over the Ohio River Valley. And here's that cold air again punching in on the backside. And we're once again going to cool down 
with Arctic-like air. And uh, by the time we're waking up Saturday morning, I'm not sure you're going to really want to wake up and go outside. It's going to be much like this morning, if not even colder for a lot of folks here. Uh, here's that freezing line once again getting all the way down to the Gulf Coast again for Saturday morning. And Saturday afternoon won't be much better. A lot of folks going to struggle to hit freezing, even in places like Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, Birmingham, Atlanta, Jackson, these very far south cities. Again, high temperatures only going to be in the 30s. Uh, so this will likely be even colder than what you're seeing with this first shot of cold air for areas of the eastern half of the country. Uh, and then that hangs around a Sunday morning here. Again, very cold. Uh, and Sunday afternoon, we rebound a little bit more before, again, going into next week, uh, we've got some good news. Now, this is about a week out from now. Uh, this is our 500 millibar height anomaly map. And again, this just shows where we have troughing and ridging, which kind of helps us to gauge what the temperatures will be like. Uh, and uh, this is what the models have been showing for a while. Middle of next week, we've got a big trough dumping in the west and a huge ridge building all the way up into Canada. Uh, now, if you're new to the channel and you don't really know what this means, well, what this means is where we see these big ridges, uh, air is going to come out of the south. Just imagine the equator trying to balance out that cold air in the Arctic uh, by pushing all of this air and uh, warm air and tropical air. Uh, northbound, and that's what we're going to see next week. We're going to warm up big time here uh, with that ridge in place, and the Climate Prediction Center here agrees. Six to ten day temperature probability, uh, very high likelihood for really the entire country that we're going to be above to well above average here in the temperature department to end out January. And I'm sure a lot of folks are going to be happy about this, especially how cold it's been with this Arctic air and will continue to be through the rest of this week before again next week we finally rebound and see some nicer uh, temperatures move on in. Now, in the precipitation department, uh, again, it's going to be active as well. Now, as that ridge is building in, we're going to have multiple storm systems likely track along that ridge here, and it's going to be quite wet next week, I think, uh, for a big section of the country here to end out the year, and likely even, I will mention, potentially a little bit stormy. Now, maybe not necessarily severe weather stormy with tornadoes and uh, strong winds, but uh, with all of this warm air coming back out of the equator, look at this uh, map. This map shows you lightning flash density, or just where we're seeing thunderstorms, and uh, look at these thunderstorms returning to the southern tier of the country uh, going into the middle of next week and even into later next week we're turning into the southeast as some of these low pressures move on through uh, and we've got some thunderstorm complexes likely to move on in with them so a little bit of a taste of spring next week I think uh, for a lot of folks and again I think it'll be welcome as well as it's been so cold recently I think a lot of us could use a little bit of a warm-up and even a little bit of some springtime weather now, don't get too excited. Don't pretend that this is the beginning of spring. Again, we've got a lot of winter to go. Uh, this is only the last week of January. So we still got to get through all of February, and it's a leap year, so we even get an extra day of February, as well as March. We see plenty of big-time storms in March a lot of the time, uh, and uh, this winter could be no different in that same department. Uh, so, again, that's kind of what we're expecting over the next uh, week or so here through much of the country. Uh, now, I appreciate you hanging in there with me. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday out there, and I'll see you all tomorrow.